Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to go over some changes to my deadlift programming, primarily um, then towards the end, I'll get like another update as to um, what current training plans are in the long run, body comp stuff. Um, so yeah, um, first off, this is going to be um, my primary dead deadlift day. So I had a single at RPE five to six, um, try off as a 600 pounds, and then I had a three by seven at RPE five, um, did 501 for my, for my first set, um, and then I dropped down to 474 for the last two, just to like stay pretty conservative. Um, but I'm making some changes to my deadlift programming, mainly via the training week layouts, then also as I am kind of approaching my deadlift training. Um, so in the past, my, my training was laid out where I was having my secondary squat day and then leg press, um, pretty high volume on that day. And then on Tuesday, I would tend to have my heaviest deadlift day. Um, and then also on Fridays, I would combine um, heavy squats with secondary pulls. Um, um, but I have noticed um, just from talking with like some friends, like one of my friends, Brendan, he has pretty similar leverages to me. We tend to have a pretty similar training response just from like anecdotally, like what we've talked about. And he kind of talks about his whole training week layout. I mean, his training has caught fire re re recently. Um, so kind of talked to my coach about potentially moving my primary deadlift day to the middle of the week. Um, on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. So I have one day of recovery in between my volume squat and volume leg press so I can hopefully have a little bit higher output on that primary day. Um, so this is week one of that. Um, I did feel a little bit fresher today, a little bit less fatigue in my back, a little bit less soreness in, in my legs. Um, I'm type of person where I just get very sore with training. Um, I have to I can do high volumes, but they tend to beat me up a lot. They do grow me very, very, very fucking well for hypertrophy, but for strength gains, it really does have a trade off. Past around, like for me, I get diminishing returns around 15 sets per muscle group per week um, that are hard and overloading. Um, just I tend to just not have that much in terms of strength gains, um, but I do get more in terms of muscle growth. Um, with, you know, if you go closer to 20 sets per week, but for strength, just not the case. So I am basically lowering down volume, just a tad on all my movements. Um, just because I have noticed that my DOMS has been a little bit more severe than, than usual. And just, and just like thinking about like the past two, like, I think I'm the type of person where I like to do a lot. I like to work hard and, but like, my enthusiasm can get to my own de detriment. And so just having to like take that step back, really look at myself logically and in the mirror and say like, look, like what's your goal? Um, what's it going to take, um, et cetera. So, you know, lowering down volume, just a tad across the board from a, so hopefully lower fatigue from a central systemic perspective. Um, and hopefully that also helps my, my peripheral fatigue and which is just soreness and muscle group as like central like nervous system systemic fatigue is more so related to like, you know, axial loading on the spine and whatnot. So, um, and then going into basically I'm having my secondary deadlift day, which is going to be conventional, um, on basically just 40 hours after I do my primary pulls. So I'm essentially like from like my, my days off of deadlifting, um, from my secondary day to my primary day, it's going to be about five days. Um, so hopefully that, you know, helps you feel a little bit fresher. Um, and also will also help me self limit my secondary day. Um, a little bit more since I have tended to push both days pretty hard. Um, and that did work for, for me in the past. And I was very, very strong after my meet in April when I hit 700 pounds on deadlift. Um, I was on actually a really big hot streak with deadlift just everything was just lighting up, but you know, I got hurt. And I think that was because I was pushing both days too hard. And especially like once you get to a certain strength level, um, every unit of training long that, that you do is more fatiguing because you're lifting more weight. Um, so I just need to take a little bit of a step back and experiment with something because that has been tricky to, tricky to navigate. Um, realistically, like, I, I have gained a lot of strength back on my, my deadlift. When I was hurt with my lat after my meet in April, 
I really could only do like maybe two heavy sets per week on my competition deadlift um, with, before I had like unreal pain in my, in my lats. And I remember I couldn't really go above like 551 for a long time, which is like 80% on my max. And when I came back to basically, oh, I, my lat was kind of feeling good. I figured I would see where I was at with like a 9.5 single. And I was basically at like a, I worked up to 639 and that was really hard. <laughs> Um, that was basically near max. That was like about as hard as 700 felt in my competition. In my competition, so I was like, "crap." And you know, I built back up to be able to hit, you know, probably 694. Had I made a better training choice in my last meet, um, not training choice, a better competition day choice, and just took what I had. Um, so you know, 694 from like 640 is a good, you know, re re return like regain strength. Something you have to understand is that once you get to like more of those high levels of strength. It's not like you just can't be that strong. <laughs> Again, it's just, it takes a lot of time. Um, and it's something that can be very easily, easily lost, um, very, very quick, quickly. So, um, I was happy about that, but I'm excited to see what this does for my deadlift programming. Um, you know, if it keeps working, well, awesome. If not, you know, we'll keep going back to the drawing board, but, um, essentially in terms of like meet schedules, and whatnot. My coach and I are planning on doing a little mock meet in February to see how I peak out after this cycle, um, see what progress I have. Um, now that is if training is going well, because I've been recovering from code like the past four weeks. I've basically been like off and on sick since September. So I feel like I've been just kind of like constantly curb stomped by life, but you know, I'm hanging in there. Um, and I guarantee you, like, as soon as I I'm better, like I'm probably going to make really fast exponential progress out of seemingly nowhere. Um, right now, it's about getting that training volume, doing what I can, and just trusting and just being patient in the process and, you know, really auto regulating my training based on, based on how I'm feeling. Um, so, and then in terms of body composition, um, I did unintentionally diet down a little bit about like uh, four to five pounds. I was like 194, still pretty lean, like, still probably like. 10% at the very most. Um, but with COVID, I lost my appetite. Um, I also got blood work back because I was feeling really off. I was like, well, like, okay, like what's, what, what's wrong? Maybe something on my blood will tell me. Um, and I am still very hypothyroid. So I also was prescribed more medication by my doctor. So I increased that dose. And basically I don't know exactly where my calories are at. So I just lost about four to five pounds. Um, so I'm like 189 to 191 in the mornings. Um, I'm pretty lean right now. I'm probably like seven to 8% body fat. Like the crazy thing about being stage lean is like, if I was to set up on stage, I would like to be at like elite levels of conditioning. I would have to lose about 10 pounds from here. Um, which is just, you know, like that's just how lean you have, you have to have to be on stage nowadays. But my whole thing is like, I need to gain more muscle. Um, I have always will stay pretty lean. Um, I don't really ever go much about 10% body fat. Um, but my goal is to basically slowly add one to two pounds a month, um, between now and my meat in uh, my med, med, med big meat in May, which is going to be on May 13th at FitCon. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of, of updates, a lot of rambling, but hopefully you guys got some insight on this. Um, Things have been hard right now, but you know, training is not always linear. And you know, the, the difference between people that do get really strong and you reach your goals are people that can actually tough through these um, tough short term periods because they have a long term vision that they that matters more, just a lot to them. So, you know, if things get hard for you, just don't quit. Keep, keep doing your best and showing up and doing your job, and it'll all be worth it.